the mindset now too. Right. No. Okay, I'm going to call this uh, work session of the Perrysburg Board of Education on June 5th, 2024. So order. Uh, Mr. Dreer, roll call, please. Ms. Roland Miller. Here. Ms. Minke. Here. Dr. Rufford. Here. Ms. Larimer. Here. And Mr. Bennington. I am here. Uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America. America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. all right, we're gonna move past the safety briefing, given uh, just the usual suspects here today. Got a lot to cover today, so uh, uh, I'm looking for a motion to adopt the proposed agenda. So moved. Dr. Ruffer? Second. Ms. Larimer? Roll call, please. Dr. Reffert? Yes. Ms. Larimer? Yes. Ms. Sorry. Minke? Yes. Ms. Roland Miller? Yes. Mr. Bennington? Yes. So in the interest of making sure that we cover some of the necessary business for the administration, we've moved the consent agenda kind of to the front here so that we can do that vote in case uh, this meeting goes long towards the end. So with that, can I have a motion to accept the consent agenda? Uh, Ms. Roland Miller and Ms. Larimer. And roll call, please. Ms. Roland Miller. Yes. Ms. R Ms. Larimer. Yes. Ms. Minky. Yes. Dr. Rufford. Yes. Mr. Bennington. Yes. Consent agenda passes. Thank you. So I believe then that takes us to another combined superintendent's and treasurer report. You guys did it so well at the regular board meeting, you're going to take another crack at it. Click and clap. Nice. Well, So what we um, what we wanted to accomplish today was to um, take the information that we heard from the board discussion on um, uh, Monday in, in May 20th at the May 20th board meeting and kind of uh, come back with information that board members had discussed and come back with. Um, you know, kind of those the, the, the follow-up to many of those discussions. So we've we've outlined, as you can see on the screen here, kind of the things, and, and this is the decision exercise for the board. So Randy and I are are kind of view us as your Sherpas. So we're gonna carry the load and, and help you reach the top of the mountain with making this decision. Um, and, and so whatever it is that you need to be successful in that climb, we want to be able to prepare that to you. So um, I just watched a movie about Everest. <laughs> you know, the Sherpas were great. Some of the others didn't work out so well. For I was say, how <laughs> he just scared me. I don't know about you guys, but I like the analogy. There are That's people good. that are frozen to the side of Mount Everest, and, and as a board, we don't want you to be. Thank you, for the recognizing. Oh, thank, thank you for recognizing that. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, I think we're doing everything to provide oxygen. So if you're on your own on oxygen. <laughs> so the, a couple decision points that we wanted to, you know, from the discussion, and certainly the board has the right to, to talk, change, go anywhere they want to go, but our decision points um, from, the, from the May 20th led us to the first, the first question is to replace or not to replace. The second one, if we're rejecting letting it expire, then we need to make a decision as a board, you need to make a decision about what type of levy. And then what are the mechanics of the different types of levies? And then the terms that may or may not go with them. And, and, how the, and then the mechanics of how that would structure. And then the levy outlook, which we kind of got into in, in that discussion about how frequently existing levies, new levies, all those things will line up. And then basically, you know, a discussion about where are we with these decision points. And then finally, you know, what we're hoping for is not necessarily a vote today from the board unless the board declines or, or decides to say, yeah, this is it, let's move.
but we're anticipating getting some direction saying, you know, give us, uh, you know, behind doors number one, two, and three, have those prepared for the June regular meeting, and then we can discuss it and be ready with the resolutions. As we know, it's important to have, you know, the right language, the right numbers, everything in order. So we want to make sure that we're we're working ahead of the curve, so we have plenty of time to work with uh, bond council to get those things right. So so with that, um, you know, we'll we'll set it up here. So the, the this slide here represents the the needed decisions and the decisions that have been made so far, which <laughs> there hasn't been any. So um, and here's the thing about this conversation. Um, if, if we have, um, depending on what the board decides, that will open up other decision points that you'll have to, to make. So for example, let the levy expire or not. Um, and then the amount of funds to be collected with this levy. So if you renew it, we'll get into this, there's a set dollar amount that we'll continue to collect until the, you know, based on the duration that the board sets. If you do that, then there's going to be a need in the future for additional funds because this is Ohio. There's been over 11,000 school levies in Ohio because the way it's set up is, you know, with House Bill 920, we don't capture growth um, in across all of our levies. Um, so how many years will we go before the next levy is needed? And then from the May 20th conversation, there were things about, well, we would like to hear more about additional funds and what that would look like. So and so we want to kind of talk a little bit about that. Additional funds are sought, how much is needed, how many mills, and then what is the cost per $100,000? And how far out will that take us as a, as a district? So, and again, your input will guide, we didn't come with, we'll give you concepts, but we didn't come because it's for your role to give us those, those um, parameters. And then there are the types of levies and then the length of the levies. So the first decision point is, you know, to let the levy expire or not. And just to kind of rewind a little bit, in 2024, this levy collected $13.5 million annually. It's 9.75 mills. And if you, you know, tell us that we want to let it expire, the district would need to fill um, close that $13.5 million hole in our budget, which represents um, approximately 17%. So, so that would impact the district. I, I'm not being you know, dramatic here, but it would change the, the, it would change the district um, significantly in, in all areas. Um, so so uh, this next slide talks about what the voters approve because the voters vote on the current valuation. So in 2020, they were to raise the amount of money that the district needed was 7.5 million new dollars. They based that 7.9, and then in 2021, the 9.5, 2022, the 11.1, 2023, the 12, and then 2024, the 14.2, based on the valuation of the district in 2019, because they don't think that that's the most current data they have. How this is actually played out and why incremental levies for districts like Perrysburg are a benefit, one, and we'll talk a little bit about how it works. We collect the dollars that we need when we need them. And then when we do, they use a more updated version of the valuations. So you can see here that from 2020 to 2024, five years, we went from 7.8 mils, which was below what was on the ballot, to 9.75 mils was the top end of that, not 14.2. So that, that's an important distinction with how incremental levies work. They don't work everywhere. Uh, there's a handful of districts in the Columbus area that are growing like Perrysburg that use them, and, and this is the reason why. Um, so, so it's 4.45 mils less than what was on the ballot. That's significant. Mm -hmm. The five-year forecast that Randy went over in detail in May, um, if, if the levy is expiring, this is taken from his kind of analysis. The revenue surplus deficit without levies, you can see in 2025, we're, 
we're you know four point eight million. You can see across there a lot of red. Things begin to, you know, things begin to to bleed out for the district. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. So we went out a little bit on a, on on the ice here, away from the shore. So we didn't hear any cracking when Randy and I met to talk about this presentation together. But we reviewed the the, the videos. And um, we did not see any support among any board members about letting the levy expire. So we felt this decision point perhaps has been made that, that maybe the, the board has said, well, we have to do something. So, so that's one question mark that from the last board meeting, we're drawing from that consensus that from what we heard that there wasn't an appetite for that. So, so um, if that's the case, then we move to the next kind of decision points. And from here on in, Randy and I will kind of tag team as the information kind of um, lends itself to it. But if rejecting, uh, if we reject letting it expire, uh, we have to begin to talk about the, the type of levy. So we talked about current expense, fixed rate levies, emergency levies, renewal levies, and replacing expiring levy with an incremental levy. So those were the things that those are the, the primary options. Um, we talked about the, um, uh, you know, spent a little bit of time in the last presentation about the income tax and kind of walked through what that would do and how that would work um, and how it would attach and change potentially our existing income tax. Um, so that's still, still, still there, um, but certainly um, it's, you know, we sensed from the discussion that it was good to have that discussion, but we're also interested in exploring these other options. This is kind of a, a well, this wasn't included in the slides, but we had a couple of conversations with board members. Randy and I felt it was helpful for us to maybe include this as kind of a, a, of a quick kind of cheat sheet. So there's, this represents three different kinds of, of mills, levies, uh, millages and that are generated from levies. So one is inside mills. So every county in Ohio is allotted, the commissioners are allotted 10 mills. They can divide those up a, across uh, governmental entities within their county. And in Wood County, it's 4.8 mills, I believe. That's that, a, the schools. Good. Yeah, that go to the schools. So 4.8 mills of inside mills of the 10 allowable within a county in Wood County, they said school districts will get 4.8 mills. Um, so those are in, included in the millage floor, um, and and uh, it's it is open to growth, so it doesn't roll back like some of the other mills uh, that are subject to House Bill 920, um, and it stays at 4.8 mills. So um, so that's inside millage. Fixed rate levies. Those are voter approved levies. They're limited growth. They're affected by the rate and class of the levy, um, and the rate can decrease but not increase past voted amounts. So, um, so what that means is we, you know, collect a specific dollar amount, and if the community grows, that decreases. Um, that goes against the 20 mil floor, and we can't collect a dollar more. And, and so that's how the fixed rate levies go. And then you have fixed sum levies, which are voter approved, no growth, and the rate is adjusted to generate the voter approved amount. And that's what the incremental levy does. That, that would fall under that category. And so the board would put to the voters, this year we're going to collect this amount. So going back to this slide, each year the voters each year, the, the, the voters approved to collect this amount of money in the far right column. Mm -hmm. So the, the effective millage rate adjusts to collect that dollar amount. Um, so we can't collect a dollar more than that. Um, it's very prescribed that way. So, so that, that's kind of a, a cheat sheet. Randy put together the slide based on the conversation on May 20th and, and a couple of feedback um, conversations. and. Randy, maybe you want to walk through this. is okay. really helpful, I think. Yeah, so it's very clear. Obviously, we've talked about this language before, but sometimes 
it's kind of hard to picture. So I put it, I put an example here together. So on the left side of this sheet, we're, we're, I'm kind of giving an example of a, a levy that's kind of equivalent to what we have today. So it's, I'm going to assume we have a base valuation of a million, a billion dollars. That's assessed value. That's not market. That's assessed value. That's what tax is based off. And if we had a 10 mil levy, it's going to generate 10 million dollars. So let's assume. Um, that we have an update or something else going on and valuation increases 10%. So valuation due to inflation area, you know, sales, Dale, whatever is driving the valuation increase goes up 10% by, it goes up by $100 million. And then on top of that, let's assume we have new construction of $15 million. Now I want to note, this is appraised value of new construction, not taxable. And they'll come into play in a minute. Because a lot of times we'll talk about, hey, we're building a, we're building a new a subdivision. It's fifteen million dollars, right? But that's not what we're going to get taxes based on. So on a fixed rate levy. So on a fixed rate levy, the valuation just went up one to one point one million billion dollars. We're still only collecting ten million on that. So the effective millage drops to nine point oh nine. Now, the nice thing about a fixed rate levy is, though, we do collect new money on the construction, new construction. In this case, the $15 million, multiply that times 35%, times 9.09, .09, you generate just slightly less than $48,000 in new money. And so our new collection now, our new base collection is now $10,048,000, and our new base valuation is $1.5 105 billion dollars. So the fixed rate, now in, in this case I'm assuming we're not on the 20 mil floor, okay? That's just, just the cleanest calculation. If we're on the 20 mil floor, this gets really wonky. Mm -hmm. If we added a if we added a 10 mil fixed rate levy, we would be off the 20 mil floor and this is what would apply. And so, you know, so again, that's the advantage of the fixed rate. Yes, it, it, we, can, we can only collect the base amount um, what was voted, but the base amount will increase with new construction. The fixed sub levy doesn't matter what happens. In this case, the updated valuation goes up to the $1.105 billion because that's the combination of the valuation update and new construction. We're still going to collect $10 million, so the new effective millage is 9.047. We're still collecting $10 million. That illustrates the difference. Okay, so from, um, and so if you're an you know, individual taxpayer, both cases you see your effective rate drop, it's going to drop more of the fixed sum because your, that new construction is taken over part of that 10 million collection is not additional. Does that make sense? Is that clicking? Okay. As we talk about this. Oh, well, and, and, be, and to be upfront, I mean, our conversation with Sue last week kind of yeah. illustrated that we weren't doing a good job of communicating the impact. So I tried to put some numbers that maybe we could relate to. Mm -hmm. And this is an order of magnitude where we are, right? Um, and so this is, you know, obviously, and I used, of course, I use round numbers too. So, so if this is good, so this is mm -hmm. this is the difference. It's a good visual. And, um, and of course, and these are, you know, the, the, the calculations are probably a little bit more nuanced in the auditor's office, but they're, 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 they're close enough mm -hmm. here. With that, if there's, if we're good, we'll move on. Yeah. Okay. So we thought it would be helpful to, um, going, going, this is a slide we actually took out back in, in 2008 as an example of how a, an incremental levy works versus a traditional levy. So you'll see school districts that will put levies on, and, and so this is a traditional levy, and, and so this is an example where they do, hey, we're going to do a four-year, um, four-mil incremental levy. I'm sorry, four-mil, four-year four, uh, four levy. And then an incremental levy increases incrementally each year. And we and that takes the dollars that you need for each year um, with a traditional levy because you can't do that 
you have to kind of look in the crystal ball and say, hey, by 2008, we're going to need to collect this much money. We're projecting that four mills over the course of those years will get us to that dollar amount that year. So, so again, it's it's the incremental levy captures only the funds needed at that time. Um, over the life of a four-year levy, an incremental levy will collect three fewer mills over the life of the levy than a traditional one, and and that's certainly a savings to our you know the residents here because we're 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 not collecting that four full four mills that first year. We don't we don't need that. And I think you know while we're bringing this up is that I think from the board meeting we got the sense that there's two kind of discussions. Number one was a no new tax renewal, but then on the other hand, that just kicks the can down the road. Should we look at additional revenue? So that's why we're laying this out there. If if there's an appetite for additional revenue, you know what are the options? But do I understand from something that y'all said that? we can't, the incremental that we have now, we can't replace it as an incremental. This would have to be a whole new levy if we did an incremental, correct? Um, I'm, I'm going to just, you're correct. I want to just point out one word that you used. Um, we can't renew it. So a renewal is, a renewal would be taking the amount that we're collecting today. The 13.5. And, and that would stay. So if we renew this levy, that amount would be consistent going forward for the duration the board would set. We are not allowed to renew a levy that increases its, the taxes. Um, so that would be replaced. You're correct. So we're replacing that levy, the expiring levy, with an incremental levy. So okay. it, would be a, it would be replacing it with an incremental levy. A new incremental, new incremental levy. levy. Okay, yeah, because yeah. if we if we renewed it at the 13 mil, yeah. then it's a fixed sum, right? Correct. Yeah. Well, the, the incremental is a fixed sum too. Yeah. It's incremental fixed sum. But the point is, and Tom's exactly right. The only way we can call it a renewal is if we're we're essentially making no change in the collection of this year, the last year of the. That's the only way we can call it a renewal. Anything else we do is going to be a new levy, whether it's a new emergency, a new fixed sum, a new fixed sum incremental, a new fixed rate, and it's it's it's, it's somewhat semantics, but they're they're legal semantics they're, yeah, about that. Yeah, important that most people don't make the distinguish between. So what then? Dare I ask this now? And if it's not the right time, let me know. So now we're talking the effects of an incremental levy. How does that compare with option two? Well, I'm looking at our sheet originally. Option two, the current expense fixed rate. Could we hang on to that? Yeah. OK. Because we'll talk about that here in a couple of minutes. Okay. And to clarify, because these words are important, the 13.5 is the dollars collected, not the mills. Did I say mills? You said mills, yeah. 13.5 in yeah. dollars. <laughs> it's a good sign Laura put on her jacket. Must be got finally got cool enough in here. Yeah, let us know. We can adjust that. I don't get over it. That, yeah, that, that side. I'm good. I, I need to wear a sweater, so I'm right. Okay. So we can Again, so I mean, I just want to reiterate, we brought this up only because the, the, the idea of not kicking the can down the road mm -hmm. was brought up. Yeah. But obviously, you just hit on the discussion. Selling a renewal, even though it ends up being maybe the same financially as new, different sales pitch. Gotcha. Well, I, I've always liked this chart that you made, Tom, because yeah. that makes it the um, impact Su of the renewal. Susan, did you have a question? Yeah, can we go back? Sorry, Tom. Feel like, um, not, I mean, I understand the incremental levy if you go back one. But in our case, it's the opposite, where we're going to be locking in in that case, and this isn't the millage, but we're going to be locking in. Tom, can you go back one? Who? That one? Yeah. So we're going to be locking in the 2.5. Like, we're going to be locking in the existing lower versus the incremental would be going up well, and collecting more money. Yeah, because I think so the, I, the point here is, I think, is there's really three, there's kind of three options, or four options. We already said 
doing nothing is not an option. But if you renew, right, you're locking in at that lower rate. Right. If you want new revenue, you've got two choices. You go for a higher millage or you go for an incremental that raises that millage over time. Yeah. So the, in terms of looking at the last column, that's not really applicable to our situation. It, it could, could be. be if you chose to replace the expiring levy with a new incremental levy. Yeah. The new incremental, yeah. Right. This is just a... But, this, the, but yeah. the traditional levy that we would be locking <coughs> in is a fixed sum at $13.5 million. Would just divorce, divorce from the 13.5 million for a moment. So what the so this is this again was a slide taken in 2008. So what the the um, this was to show that if we are needing new funds, mm -hmm. there are two different doors that we're showing here that that you can choose. One would be how much money are we going to need to okay. operate in four years? If we do the mm -hmm. traditional, we're going to need to collect four mills every one of those years. So then so the option if we renew is not on that chart. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's the next one. All right. This, this one. one. This yeah. one, you're right. Yeah. right. I'm, I'm tracking your, your question. I have that same kind of, when we're talking renew, we're talking about ballot language that essentially says 13.5 right. million dollars so with the, the millage. So those are the two ways to potentially add. add Correct. Money. Okay. And, 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 and again, and, and again, the question comes down to status quo, yeah. Or do you want to go for new money at this point? Okay. So are we saying that the inc if you did an incremental, it would start at a collection of 13.5 and then we would... You could set it wherever you I think want. We could set it wherever, yeah. You could set it wherever you want. But I would think you would. we were talking about setting it 13.5. Well, yeah, that only makes sense. Yeah. But 13.5 is just barely making it as it is. Yeah. But, but, it, but night, again, the nice thing is that first year is no... No new taxes. I mean, that's the kind of thing. So I guess we're ready to move on. Yeah, and we showed this just because there might be some people that have questions about, well, what are the differences? Other districts, Ottawa Hills didn't do an incremental levy. They did a, they did one of these traditional levies. Why are, you know, what, what's the difference? So this was just to try to showcase, you know, how the, that functions, mm -hmm. um, so people understand. So this was from the five-year forecast. Um, and this was the the revenue of the renewal of the renewals. So now we're talking exactly what Susan was saying: the 13.5 million, locking that in moving forward, and the impact on the five-year forecast. So this came from Randy's report. So I'll turn it over to him if he wants to add anything. No, I think the the key point is um, renewing it gets us through without significant reductions elsewhere. Gets us through fiscal year. 28. Okay, so that's really what. So, do, so if you think about again, you know, certainly you could, if there was a way to think about, re, you know, sig, sig, I say significant reductions because it's just like um, I was talking. We were looking at some things for next year on purchasing, and we found a way to save um, um, some five, like five or six thousand um, dollars. James has on commonly items he's purchased, right? Great, we're going to save five or six thousand dollars, but that doesn't move this kind. We're going to continue to do that stuff, so it doesn't significantly move that needle. We'll continue to work on it, but if we had, without other significant reductions, the current amount of revenue gets us through 2028, assuming, of course, cooperation from the General Assembly on renewing um, the Fair School Funding Plan. Okay, and that's going to be a and right now. I can tell you right now, it's going to be a battle. Because the state's revenue is down, and uh, billion dollars to vouchers, it's going to be tough. But anyway, that's where so that's where we are on a renewal. And I think the other thing too is James operationally does a lot of things. Um, Randy, you know, talked about the fact that moving forward with our five-year forecast, we've reduced the number of positions that we've been setting aside in the budget for for growth. That will have a limiting impact on on different things we can do moving forward. So, so that that was significant. So, um, yeah, there's already essentially reductions in there. Right, Re right. Avoidance of spending, actually, not necessarily reductions. The difference is instead of impacting current staff by reductions, it is affecting future staff by never hiring them. That will impact the students' experience as they go through the district. Um, you know, and we'll, we'll talk about that. And, so, yeah. and this this particular slide here, am I on the right one? Okay. Um, 
does that include the capital outlays yes the trailers that's what i thought you yeah. said so yeah. is it i mean i i understand that technically we make it through to 2028 with a with a whopping four million dollars in your wallet but the fact that in 26 our revenue is already in the negative isn't that saying that we weren't doing something right if in 26 we're already well think about it this way um and this is going back to that previous chart we saw four mil four mils traditional levies what you do is you look out and said i've got to collect all this this year because guess what my my i'm never going to collect any more revenue I'm, my expenses are going to go up but there's no mechanism for my revenue to go up and that's the same thing here there's really no mechanism in school finance that generates new revenue inflationary revenue like with expenses even if we did nothing right let's say we negotiate zero base increases with the staff we still have inflationary increases for electricity and trash and you know all these other purchase services but no new revenue to match it so you have a choice you can try to collect enough up front to have a nest egg to carry you through to you ask again or you try to raise your revenue as your expenses go up so what we're showing here is normal for 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 schools, you tr you, obviously you don't want to be deficit spending, but short of being able to freeze all your expenses, I don't know how you can. Yeah, I, think, I think there's, because we had this conversation back in 2016 when we renewed the, the incremental levy. So we froze the amount we were collecting and we had built up you know, cash in our, in our, um, our cash balance. And we said that we were going to draw by design. We were going to draw down from that account until we reached a point where we were going to go back to the voters and ask what we needed with this new building opening. So we opened the building in 17, and we got to 2019, drawing down from that account as planned, and went to the voters and said, "This is what we need." Now, there are some soon. You kind of touched on that, who said, "Well, your deficit spending." Well, we're exceeding the amount we're collecting, but we did that by design. And that's, that's different than someone who's spending and then comes back and says, we blew the budget. You know, we thought our budget was here and we spent this much. Now we're surprised by this. So there's a, there's a nuance there. And I think, you know, I think people just looked at that, the, the red line and said, see, you're, you're doing something wrong. And, and it was like, no, we, we designed to do that. Families at times build up their savings account and draw down from that for different kinds of expenses. And as long as it's planned, that's okay. If you're saving up for a vacation, that month you're deficit spending. Doesn't mean you're irresponsible. It's like, well, we put our money aside all year to take this vacation. And, and so that is a responsible thing to do. But technically that month you were deficit spending. You spent more money than you were bringing in that month. So it's kind of the same thing with the school plan. You just have to be out front communicating that to the public. And despite our efforts to do that back when we renewed the levy in 2016, 2019, it became, a, you know, well, you guys are deficit spending. Well, we were, just just like the family does that month, you know, to draw that kind of distinction, so. And, and I think we need to recognize, too, that to, Think about what. Think about the mechanism. The way to avoid it is to add 100 students a year and then cut staff each year, <laughs> right? Because I mean, obviously you can cut other expenses, but you know, of our, you know, 73 million this year, you know, 83 percent of that is staff. And you start looking out, you know, you start looking at deficit spending out in 26, we could eliminate not by a single supply item and not balance the budget. Yep. Yeah, so we can move into the, the mechanics of the different types of levies. So we just kind of gave a background from May 20th, the board's discussion, trying to do maybe a, bring a little bit more to the table in terms of information and background. So, um, so kind of circling on the two discussion points from the 20th, which was 
the renewal, no new tax. And do we really want to kick the can down the road? Because in the scenario that Randy talked about, the renewal, if I back up to the slide here, um, in, in what, Randy, what Randy said on the 20th, but didn't say here, um, and, and I will, and he'll correct me if I'm wrong, but we would probably need to be on the ballot in November of 2027, because in 2028, we know that we're beginning to, you know, we're, we're run, you know, two million, four million dollars isn't enough to cover one month of operation. That's less than 30 days through cash to operate. So, so to avoid being on that razor thin and borrowing money to make payroll during the summer months when when Randy's chart, you know, shows the we're not getting the receipts from the county or the state aid. Um, so, so we would probably be back on the ballot. And, 2027. So that's a, moving forward. I think that's a really important conversation because when will we be back on if we renewal if we do a, a, a renewal? Um, and so this slide here is kind of the mechanics. So if we do a renewal, it's not a new tax. The incremental levy that would collect 1.5 million dollars new per year is estimated to cost per hundred thousand dollar value three dollars and thirty. $3.15 per month for a homeowner. So if you're in a $300,000 home, valued home, it would be three times $3.15 per month. Uh, five, $500,000 home, you can do the math. To collect $2 million a year, it would be $4.20 per month. And, and the reason we kind of threw that in there is the renewal, you guys see the renewal on the ballot back in you're back on the ballot in 27, a, a new incremental levy, 1.5 million, gains us a couple of years on that, and then a $2 million levy addition increment would gain us two to four years over the 1.5. So if you think about, if you're thinking about, and the answer may be we don't want, you know, any new taxes, that's fine. If you think about it, if we're going to ask for 1.5, a one, a two is going to gain us two to four more years, right? So instead of getting us to 29 or 30, we get out to 31, 32, you know, if you will, and that doesn't sound so far away to me anymore. <laughs> it, you know, but it, it just again, we're just giving you some data to think about, yeah. and obviously we know that each of these has its own level of risk. Right on the ask, you know, and so going. If we go back up to the 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 um, five-year forecast slide, I want to point out, this one. yeah. One of the things with this is, remember, we talked about this is the, this levy that is expiring is 17 percent of our spending. So, if you think about it, depending on your term, you're putting that much of our budget at risk. Every time, so there, there, there could be some logic here to to renew it, or re, let's say on a continuing basis or some other longer term, and then the next ask is smaller. It'll be sooner, but it would be smaller. So it's just that's why you guys get paid the big bucks to make these decisions. Yeah, and, and we'll we'll um, <laughs> as, we, as we advance here, you know, we're, we're now to the levy outlook and and. Um, levy types and terms. So now this is taking the pieces of information from May 20th, some of the things we talked about today, and kind of setting them on a menu for the board <coughs> to, to order off of. So another decision point is the, the you know, we talked about determining the type of levy. Um, and then the next thing is, you know, the, the levy length. So operational levies, this is from May 20th, one to 10 years in length, if you want it to be renewed, replaced. Um, operational levies can also be continuing. So in 2016, we talked about that incremental levy. We renewed it, and when we did, we renewed it as a continuing levy. It did receive 66% voter approval in 2016, um, and, um, and so a point of reference. So from the meeting when Randy and I watched the tape, there was concerns about the frequency of levies just to maintain the current funding and how it creates voter fatigue. 
But there was also concern expressed about gaining support for continuing levies, people wanting to weigh in on you know, whether we approve this for the schools or not. So, so, so we wanted to, taking the information that we heard, begin to apply it to the next 10 years. So this next slide, we've had this tradition. 2019, we broke the tradition because we did a five-year incremental levy. And the reason we chose five years is because it put us back on the presidential election cycle. And what we did that was strategic. That is the election that has the highest amount of voter turnout. We want the greatest number of residents voting on our most important levies. So, so keeping that tradition, we said, okay, in orange, and I hope my color coded worked out. Worked out. It did here. not. So but that's looking okay. Looking at my attire, sometimes color is a struggle. So your blue is green. So operational, operational. <laughs> yes, thank you already. So operational levy of renewal in 2024. So let's say the board voted to ask the voters to approve just renewing it. So if you follow me in 2028, that would be that levy would expire. So 13%, maybe it would drop then, maybe it would be, or I'm sorry, 17%, maybe 15% of our budget would be in the air in 2028. And then in 20, and if we ask the voters to approve, to renew that as it is, then that would take us out to 2032. That levy would then expire. Now, the permanent improvement is in black. That's every five years since 1980. So we know 2025, that levy, which brings in $1.5 million, is set to expire. And if it's renewed, it would expire again in 2030. And we just heard in 2027, more than likely, we would need to go to the voters for some additional money. So 2027, keeping the four years, it'd be 2031. So forgive the blue is the green, and we'll correct that and repost it. Thank you, Randy. <laughs> um, that's seven levies in the next 10 years. Five or six, depending on the board's options, would be to renew existing funds, just to maintain the current level of funding that we have. And you know that, that's keeping that four-year and five-year election cycle. So if we go and say, let's change that up a little bit, what would that look like? Again, the, the blue and green there. The levy cycle forecast, so let's say it's an eight-year renewal. So it's kind of compromising, and it's saying, we hear voters want to weigh in on this existing money that the board, the district needs to survive, but doing it every four years creates this log jam with, with all the other things that has to happen. So if we did it for eight years, and we said since 1980, we've been approving one and a half million dollars for PI, if the board were to choose to make that a permanent improvement levy so that it wouldn't appear before the voters again, and then, and then we would have 2027, an operational levy, and if we did that for eight years following the suit, of this, we have four levies in that 10 year span, and two or three, depending on you know, the, the PI, um, are just to maintain existing funding. So that begins to create a little more space to talk about the future, because I think when you look at this, and I've had some discussion with board members that I've appreciated, and to kind of summarize, it's like, and, and, and it, it's, it's like, with these, levies continuing to expire and to renew them, we're constantly looking in the review mirror just to, to educate the community on why we need what we've already had and what we need to, to be Perrysburg. And it doesn't give us room to talk about the future. One of the complaints that we hear every election cycle is, as a district, we're not planning enough. We're not looking forward enough. I would argue when, when we're on the ballot seven times in 10 years and five or six of those are just maintaining what we've already passed, it's hard to fit in. When do we talk about a bond issue in the next decade? Where does it fit in to this levy cycle? So part of that has that. And then the next slide here is um, 
the operational levy is is permanent, or I'm sorry, eight years. That we just looked at that one. So the next one was, um, you know, replace the operational levy with an incremental levy for six years. So now we're asking voters to increase that amount that the board can set each year. Permanent improvement levy um, becomes, uh, you know, continuous. So then in 2030, that levy in 2024 would expire. So there'd be three levies, and only one of the three would be to maintaining the existing funding that we have. It's kind of built into the 2024 levy. But it takes that addition, you know, it takes that two-step conversation with the community. We, we need to, like we're gonna have this year potentially, which is we need to save these dollars, protect Perrysburg schools, and in three years, we're going to have a conversation about how we need additional funds. This, this changes that a little bit on a six-year cycle. So in 2030, we're going to be going to the voters and saying, hey, this levy is expiring, just like we are now. And then the board in 2030 will have to wrestle with, do we lock in those funds? Or you know, do, we, do we replace that with a different kind of levy? What Randy is saying is, with the incremental levy going to 2030, we could, we could be financially in a place where we could go another two, four years beyond that and, and be in decent shape where we wouldn't have to go to the voters right away as soon. So there's, you know, so there's some variations of that. I'm, I'm, I just, when I think I've got the wording and then something changes, no, because I speak, does that mean you get up? Yeah. Oh. Down. Um, on on the okay, on this slide, you say it's a continuing operational, but it's renewing in 2030. I thought a continuing didn't renew. I thought it stayed. So in 2024, we're replacing an operational levy. So it's not renewing; it's replacing it. So we would we would replace that levy with a incremental levy that would grow, the, do, the board would set a dollar amount. It doesn't have to grow each year. The board could say 2025, no increase, 2026, an increase, 2027, no increase. I mean, you can structure it. We have to really be careful to show how that impacts the five-year forecast. It's, it's your title on that slide. It's oh, up above, okay. Yeah. It's, not right. a, it's not a continuum. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, I tried to keep the same format and I, so yes. It's not a continual. Oh, it's yeah. not continual. Yeah, oh. sorry. Yeah. Six okay. years. So in the pink it is six years. So sorry, Sue, that's my okay. bad. I'll correct that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, oh. so this this no, is a six year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, pink is six years and an incremental levy instead of a four year incremental levy, it's a six year incremental levy. It's just okay. trying to give us that space. And then in twenty thirty it expires. And in that, that year, the board in 2030 will say, do we renew it? They're having this conversation in 2030. Mm -hmm. What do we do? Yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll change that. Sorry. Okay. No, that's all right. That's all right. I mean, the good news is that I, I think I'm getting this. <laughs> so that, all right. Thanks, and I'll, I'll correct that. I apologize. Okay. So, no, but, no. but the, what, what's in the block is what I was trying to explain. So, thank you. So, so incremental levies, how they work, we talked about that, um, and, and the amount to raise 1.5 million a year um, or 2 million a year. You can see the what the implications would be to taxpayers. We can. And the get, what I'm um, suggesting that we're just showing that as a understanding. And at today's valuation, for example, the 1.5 is just slightly over one mil, and the two million is like 1.44 mils at today's valuation. Um, but obviously, when you, inc when, it, when you actually get the increment, that's not going to be what well, it's going to be less than that. But that's gives you perspective on. Um, 
that's where the three dollars fifteen cents and four twenty come from actually. So. So. Um, we wanted to also point out that the Perrysburg High School debt mills, we talked about this in the ballot issue, and the board designed the levy um, that was proposed to the voters around this retiring and the collection. But on December 31st, 24, um, 1.85 mills will, are set to retire. So that is something that I think becomes part of the conversation with voters as we move forward is that right now they're paying 1.85 mils that will go away um, and you know that that will impact their, their yep. bottom line as well. So this is the last year assessment next year's the last year of collection so if you if you decide to do a, a new incremental levy when that first increment happens this assessment will have fallen off and the new one will come on so there'll be a net still be a net in decrease in millage right at, at that point but even if we have a two million or you did two, two million. million dollar incremental that's 1.4 mills yeah okay. yeah yeah all right yeah. all right so we'll we'll kind of mute and uh again these are the kind of decision and i took the liberty of of like okay i think i think we i think the board reached a consensus based on the 20th even today <coughs> I didn't hear anybody say, let's let this expire. This is what we need to do. So we were able to replace that question mark. So that's that's progress. I think we can so, affirm that decision without yeah. a whole lot of discussion. Yeah. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Bennington and the board. Thank you for allowing us to share this information. So, so tough stuff here. And again, we're not, I don't think the goal here is to come to a decision I wouldn't be in favor of making a decision like this in a work session anyway. I mean, I think this is something we need to do in a regular board meeting. Uh, but we need to do it in June here. So how I'm, how I'm thinking about crafting this discussion is we'll start with any other additional questions for Tom or Randy. Then if anybody's willing, kind of opening positions, you know, the, the movie 12 Angry Men, uh, maybe we get lucky and everybody's got the, we've all got the same idea and we move on. But at least kind of stating where, where everybody's at will help Randy and Tom uh, prep for the June meeting. Well, and there is another in here, and it just, it just hit me, is if you need, obviously, we can schedule another special yeah. meeting before uh, yeah. the regular meeting if you want to have more discussion. Yeah, we hold that as an option. Because, obviously, we're at time limit here this morning, everyone's schedules, but um, we can schedule a special meeting. Okay. So, first, any other additional questions from the presentation from anyone that would be helpful? I'm looking at slide 27. Could you speak a little bit more about, you know, we, we say that it'll it'll buy us another you know, two to four years before we would need to put a new levy. Yeah. On. Could you talk a little bit more about that and where the, the kind of where the numbers come from on that when I look at your five-year forecast? Um, okay. So because that's beyond the forecast, right? Um, Tom, I, at the risk of. You want to share? Yeah. yeah. I am going to Phil, yeah, like sixteen slide sixteen is for the Yeah, I'm gonna I am going to um, give me a second here. Oh, that's good. Oh, come on, open up. There we go. Thirty six. That wasn't my screen, so I wasn't watching sugar last night. <laughs> I don't even know what that was, so all right. That is my slide. That's uh, Iceland. 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 Yeah. Um, all right. Let me tell you, show you what I did here. There's my spreadsheet to get to the get to the, the numbers, and so I built uh, some scenarios, and um, what to answer your question. So, for example, um, in this case, this is the one we're talking about. So this is two million dollars incremental. All right, so the black down here, that's the, our, our ending cash balance in the fiscal year. So I essentially took my forecast through 28 and extended it out and you know made some assumptions on inflationary growth on spending and, and that kind of thing. And then I took our levy, so 13.5 million, and then the impact of that incremental 
and you can see what it does to the cash balance. So it gets us out to FY32. We're listening so. to the Beatles somehow. Oh, that's me. Sorry about that. <laughs> I thought I was losing my mind. I'm like, what? Am I, I, need a little, I need a little help from my friends. It's perfect. I couldn't have tied it any better. Am I here? Yeah. So, so th this we have a treasure that comes with his own walk-on music. <laughs> so, 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 so this is how I, you know, I get there. So I just, again, it's, it's just, a, I'm just extrapolating out the forecast, and like I did the same thing for like the 1.5, and you see it gets us out to, you know, out to 30, not nearly as strong. Yeah. So instead of being here, we're, we end up here with. The debt five hundred thousand dollars a year, and it's tricky. Well, anyway, so um, okay. hopefully that is that's how I get there. So that's you just see behind the curtain. Ignore the man behind the curtain. So, so summarize that again, Randy, so I can catch that. So what? I, what? So to get that projection, how far we get out? I took the five-year forecast and extrapolated out the revenue and expenses based on inflationary numbers. So nothing, I'm not doing any fancy planning. I'm just saying, you know, 4% for purchase, whatever that, that is. And then I just took our current collection and then added the incremental to it as the additional revenue. And that and that's, that's how I'm estimating cash balance. And then so is it incremental at six years? Well, I did five years in this case. Five? Yeah, so if I, if I added, um, for example, um, that's why I like. Why he's looking that up? The six years. Why did you pick six years, Tom, in this scenario? And Randy and I didn't. We, we talked about it, but the six years is puts us on the next biggest election cycle, which is the governor's race. So again, putting it in front of the greatest number of voters, presidential. The next preference for operational is the governor's race. Okay. So that's you know. And and. and you also got to recognize, so another year, you know, doesn't, it gets us out there, gives us more juice, but you also got to recognize, when we start estimating particularly expenditures, when you're doing it based on a percentage, you're starting to see like $4 million, $5 million a year, just because the numbers have gotten bigger. Percentages haven't changed, but the number, so, you know, 3% on nine, $90 million is different than 3% on $100 million. So, and the other thing in here, we the big unknown, of course, is how many by there's three bianiums in, in here. Oh. Now, but the assumption for the most part is that our state funding is flat, so it's conservative in in that regard. That I assumed our state funding would be flat. Um, so, anyway, and 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 modest, and really no. Um, significant increases in our general property tax that is if we stay at the 20 mil floor I'm not forecasting any huge a repeat of this past year in there so they're conservative on the revenue numbers right that's why I kind of I'm kind of like leery exactly how far because we could end up making another year right so anyway that's how I got there I hope that helps Susan and, and, I, and just so you know, in, in all these discussions, I played, and I also play with things of if it doesn't, if we don't replace it, what kind of reductions do we have to do, you know, to, to, to keep up? And it, and it um, so that's why I use, I use a spreadsheet for a number of different things. So. Mm -hmm. and any other questions? I'll give it back to you, Tom. Okay. Here, thank, you, thank you, Susan. So now let's move into going around the table and, and putting where we're at. And I guess uh, what's, I'm happy to start. I'll go ahead and start just to warm up the conversation. So you know, thinking about this, having thinking about what is the right thing to do, um, thinking about purely financially, giving the board, giving the administration, giving this district what it needs out for the future, setting up future board members for success. Hearing Tom talk about, you know, the ability to plan for the future. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that until he had said that, and that is, that is, uh, that, that hits a mark with me. Um, taking advantage of the reduced 
millage coming from the Perrysburg High School debt retirement is an opportunity here, an opportunity I had hoped we'd be able to take advantage of for a new building project or new building projects, but that's not the case. But that, that is still uh, something that's out there that uh, is in our favor. Again, what allows this district to, to, to plan the longest levy fatigue is real. I've been involved with levies with this district since 2010, so I can attest to the amount of energy and cost and risk that that puts out there for a district. You know, that puts me right now today mostly in the camp, strongly in the camp of this concept of uh, uh, the, the six-year incremental million and a half, two million. You know, do, do, do I sit here and think about should it be six years, eight years, 1.5, 2, 2.5? I mean, I'm going to trust Randy and Tom with kind of that modeling and, and, and the work they've done there. Um, that to me feels right now where I'm sitting the right thing to do for this district strategically uh, for the operations. Um, but I also recognize that what isn't the right thing to do is to do anything that puts tomorrow's budget at risk as well. So I still have the door open uh, and we'll be thinking about this over the next three weeks, the political wins in this community, the recent levy defeats, the, the, the overall economic sentiment that's out there that I don't have a desire to risk 17% of our budget either. So I still leave the door very much open for renewing 9.75 for four years and letting this district, you know, fight another day, I guess, for lack of a better better term. So um, that's not a board position. I'm, I'm kind of buying you guys time. I'm happy to share my thoughts first to let you guys mull it over. So I will be quiet and turn it over to somebody else. It's a fixed sum. So whatever the board establishes as the collection point and the increment, that's all we're going to do. What's, what the new construction does under that is it reduces the, um, the amount of the millage to collect that amount. Yeah, if I could, if I could jump in for a moment. Yeah. So somebody is building a new home with an incremental levy, they will pay school taxes. They will pay the same share as the person who lives across the street that's been there for 15 years. So they're not sidestepping that. It's just we don't collect any additional money from that new home because we're collecting the amount the voters approve. So it's yeah. even though, is it every year? Every year it's going up a little bit. So it's going up, but we're still only collecting that amount. So it's well, kind of like each year it's a fixed Tom, go back to the slide on the, how our, our incremental actually worked. So Sue, if you look at this slide, when, when the projection was when it was passed to get to our full collection it was going to be 14.2 mils. It's actually to get to full collection is 9.75. That's because of valuation and new construction, right? So the, the share per dollar, so per person essentially, dropped because of increases. So we don't collect more money, but we're spreading it out over more. Gotcha. Okay, so an incremental levy that everybody is used to, how is that different than the current expense fixed rate? Because when we were talking, that's where I was leaning because it would capture the new bill. Okay, so I don't have it in here and we can, we can run this, but think about it. we get new money from new construction, right? But what the um, incremental does is it says you're getting 1.5 or 1 million or 2 million whatever the board sets no matter what happens with new construction right so we're not getting necessarily new money from new construction new cons uh, in that case so the fixed so you don't do an incremental on a fixed rate you can only do it on a fixed sum and plus you're not going to get 1.5 million from new construction 
we don't have that we just don't have that you're, you're gonna need um, well you could, you could do the math they're gonna we're gonna we're gonna need more than uh, uh, um, we're gonna probably need what 200 million dollars in new construction to get there and that's not gonna happen per year per year so are you then saying that the option number two, the current expense fixed rate, is not as good an option as an incremental? Okay, depends, depends on, on your goals. What What are your goals? What are your goals? Yeah. If If here's we're going back to the last meeting, um, the beauty of a new fixed rate levy. It generates obviously more revenue from new construction and it gets us off the 20 mil floor which could be a selling point in, in lieu of an update in a couple in three years right so it's, is it better or worse it's not going to collect as much unless you set the fixed rate higher but it's I just want to point out it's, it just depends what your goal is Sue if you're if you want to, if your goal is to solidify where we are today that might be the that might be the best option if your goal is a, you know be able to look more toward the future then maybe a fix something you know I can't I can't answer that for you with with that we, we would have to go back to the voters for new money in 2027 right I mean so it's just you know, it locks it in and secures that depending on how you do it. If it's, you know, locking it in for eight years or locking it in, you know, continuously or four years, it locks it in, but it doesn't eliminate the fact that we would need additional revenue at okay. some point or so make reductions or okay. accommodations. So to me that, yeah. um, because when we talk, I was leaning towards that because an incremental levy was not included in our 20, right, right. May 20th thing. Yeah. Um, so that to me is a is a huge disadvantage because it's not going to help with the voter fatigue, right. which I think is so palatable um, in the community. And I re I switched over to. Um, to your PowerPoint, I was doing it in the PDF. So on um, slide 26, the looks of that to me is is a happier circumstance than the mess that the schools are forced into now. I think going six years is a nice compromise. I mean, we could go eight, but I think it's a nice compromise between the, the insanity of every four or putting it out to eight where people are saying, well, wait a minute, we want a voice in this six perfect compromise. And to make it an incremental, again, I'm, I am just not favoring kicking the can down the road. I'm really not. I think that's irresponsible <coughs> to, to do that. I really do. I mean, I know the risk is real, but to, to renew it is also a risk in this, in this mess as well. And then we have to turn right around and come back and say, okay, well, I know y'all renewed it, but we still need a little bit more. Yeah, that's not going to work. So I think it makes, of course, I thought the one in the spring was perfection beyond all, all realization. So I'm still trying to figure out why. Yeah, I've learned that there are perfect ballot issues, and there are the ones that voters approve. And trying to thread that needle is where we are today. That is yeah. that is so well said. Um, so I think I'm I think I'm leaning towards towards this. I now I under, and that's where I was kind of getting glitched up a little bit was the difference between a current expense fixed rate 
and the incremental, and I think I like I think I like the looks of slide 26 better. And then if you're looking at um, maybe in 28 or 29 a bond, um, that makes makes sense there then too because we, we just can't keep adding the trailers as to, unless we start stacking them on top of each other. That's going to be pretty bad. So I heard, st I heard, well, so six-year incremental is what I've heard from, from yeah, you. Re replacing I, I really the... Think, yeah. Okay. Um, I think that is the most responsible way. And it shows a compromise between those who want the boys and those who are sick and tired. And the six years seems to make that compromise. And then to make the permanent improvement levy a continuing... Um, I don't see how anybody could argue with the logic of that at, what's it, what, one and a half million a year? About 1.6, yeah, yeah. that's kind of a, a spit in the ocean as to what we really need right. for all of our buildings and what they need to do. And now that we don't have the bond, that one and a half million is going to, I can't even imagine what James is going through to try and figure out how he's going to make that stretch. Um, but if anybody can do it, it'll be him. Mm -hmm. so, so that that's testing that's Thank you, Sue. I think I'm on the same wavelength with both of you. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The whole coming to the ballot all the time gets obviously tiring, so I'm not going to keep repeating what you guys have both said. Um, but I like the slide, the idea of slide 26 as well. Um, we know what we're getting, and we know it's not every other year. Uh -huh. That's all I have to say. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Susan or Laura? No pressure. I can say stuff. I just, I, you just have to give me a minute. <laughs> yeah, I, again, did not repeat. I think uh, when I've listed my criteria, one was that we, um, how do we plan for the future and give ourselves space to plan more so? Um, I, I do think that allowing, you know, this six years, I'd love to go eight years, but I think the six years is a good compromise as well, allows us the space in that 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009 to say, and what about a new elementary school, um, let alone the high school? We, we need. I think we all need that space and really to do the strategic planning required in order to really look to the future. So I, I think the tension I feel in the community is this desire to, to have a say, but then to say that we need to plan. And to me, this is the incremental levy allows us that space to say we are planning. Um, and we're not going to keep asking for money that's the same exact money. I like the incremental because it allows for inflationary growth. It, it doesn't cover all inflationary growth, but at least it recognizes that costs continue to go up as new students come in and as the economy evolves. Um, so I think, you know, even at the last meeting, I thought the incremental levy sounded like I realize the language for that is going to be more challenging to express that to the community. Renewal is, is very easy language, but I also think we can say this is the continuation of the tax structure that has been in place. So I, I do think there's a way to utilize language to express that to the community in a way that says, it's. we can say it's not a new tax, but it, it is a new tax. It's exactly, unless we ask for the two million. I think the 1.5 versus the two, we, we need to take a look at that. It's a little easier to express the 1.5. That's why, actually, Randy, if you would be willing to share some subset of that spreadsheet so I can get, I'm very visual. Um, what's the, what does it cost us to only go for the 1.5 that we are currently at versus the two that I know pushes us a little bit further because the compounding effect of that additional two million, but um, it is easier to sell. This is exactly what we've been collecting. And that you're 
tax. Your taxes are going to go up, your millage will go up, but the share, you know, we're not collecting it all up front, we're collecting it as we need it, and the share that you're going to have as new construction comes in will decline. Your millage will still probably go up, but well, not the, at the same rate. The nice thing is, structuring it that way, just to echo it, is that we've got two years before yeah. you're going to see the increase. The increase in millage. Yeah. Right, because the first year there's no change. The second year you got the fall off and the addition. It's in the third year, then we'll okay, you'll we'll see the full yeah. millage. Important thing to get through this time, which I think made it into everybody's head. Well, it's it's a tough message, yeah. Yeah. and and going back to that cycle. And I, we're Laura, further ahead in the messaging. I'm buying so. Laura some more time here. Yeah, so I, I, I was going to just say, um, make you talking. Well, I was going to say the other thing recognizes. Going back to that busy chart is, you know, the landscape on levees has changed, right? The amount of energy, what Tom and I administrators used to be able to do, we can't, you know, we can go out there and provide information 24-7, but we really can't campaign, right? The district really can't campaign. We can't put letters in kids' backpacks and send them home like we used to be able to do, that kind of thing. So you're putting even more burden on the com community to... It, to pass something. It, the only other thing I'll say about inflationary growth, when you talk about that the General Assembly may, you know, that you are now projecting um, no increases from the state in student funding, um, and, and that that's even at risk. Yeah, no increases would be a win, it feels like right now. Yeah, so in some ways we need, once again, to make up for what the state isn't going to be providing in increases inflation and growth. Well, it's interesting too as an aside, we have not got our state share of local taxes yet. We normally get that late April. We got early May last year. We've that's June and we've not received that yet. That's two million dollars. Oh. And we've not received it yet. And that's just the, the state is philosophically Dragon. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Susan. Go on. Thank you. I, I have a quick question okay. before we start. We're, where would we purchase land? Where, how does that fit in the budget? Is that something that would have to be done through a bond, or do we have money being saved to purchase land for a new building? That's, that, that's a great question, and perhaps we could do an executive session because the board can talk about that privately. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But but we we have some thoughts on that. All right. Yeah. Um, first of all, I'd like to say I recognize that there is voter fatigue. There's always been voter fatigue. And, but I also realize that the voters appreciate having control of their tax dollars. You know, you're, you're going to get both sides of the argument. It's just part of the game. It's just how things are. Um, two. Vote, I think the we really need to listen to the voter message or messages for the past two bond issues. And I really believe that we need to apply that to this November because I don't see any change in our economic situation. Um, you know, just out there talking to young families, they're having one of the common conversations I hear all the time is, I can't believe how much it costs for a family now to go out and eat. And if they're having a hard time with that, what else are they having problems with in their home? I think we need to send out a strong message that this is not kicking the can down the road, but we need to recognize that it is a trying economic environment and that we will be coming back very likely to ask for more money. And there's multiple factors with that. We don't know what's going to happen down the road. Um, we know right now that the county auditors have been having conversations on property valuation and tax collection. I believe they're getting together this week over in, in Erie County talking about it for their annual meeting. This is something I, 
it's not going to change this year, but it might be a change that we have to deal with next year. And if we have that change in valuation and how it's done, where are we at? We're back asking the voters again for money because if it's going to go one way or another, if it's going to move, it's going to move down. And we have to recognize that. Um, I also think that we are, because of the economic issues that are going on, if we want something from our voters, we're going to have to give something. And I think Randy and the rest of the crew has been doing a great job in looking at expenses and where we can save, but I think we need to take a look at our programming and we need to take a, a good look at what is a what is not a successful program and why. Is it, a, is it a program that we need to continue? Are there some fixes that we need to do to it? Or is it something that we should just drop and that we can maybe do without and still be where we're at? Um, another thing that I have heard from people is the incremental adjustment that happened this year. People were totally shocked by it. I mean, they knew it was coming, but when they actually saw the bill in front of them, they had a hard time handling it. And I think that's part of what affected our bond money. Um, and with everything that I have said here, I would say we need to go a safe route. And I think four year renewal is the way to go. I would like to go a different way, but if we want a sure thing in November, I really think asking for more is going to be very difficult right now. I and no matter how much we get the message out. I think a message that was missed in what you said was the fact of what Randy had said that it's going to be almost three years before there's an increase because of the way it's structured. First year is basically what we've been doing. The second year, the high school falls off. The third year, it balances out. Fourth year is when the increase would happen. That's four years before the increase would happen. And that's an important message to understand, which did not get clearly explained or understood, shall we say. It was explained well. It just wasn't understood that makes going out beyond the four years make more sense because they've got three years basically where it's it's happy time. I mean, you know, we're we're giving the schools what they need to function in an inc increasing environment because of the amount of students that are coming in, the teachers that we have to hire in order to handle all these extra students, the lack of space so the, the trailers that we have to buy to house these students, yet it's going to be the fourth year out before they actually see an appreciable increase, which will be very small, according to the, the chart earlier. And it, to me, that's why I feel that it makes make up that it makes sense to do the incremental, to put it at six years, because that'll be only two years where they're seeing that slight increase, like what, what we've been doing. As Susan said, this is the same structure that we have been doing, and it's been, it's, it is a perfect mechanism for a, des a district that is experiencing silly, rapid, incredible growth. And if you don't address that, then I remember in your campaigns, you were always criticizing the schools that we were deficit spending. Well, if you just renew or keep the, you know, keep repeating the same mistake and just not adding for all these extra, extra people, then yeah. We are. We're, we're setting us. We're setting our budget up for failure. 
And and that's where I see is not responsible for us to do that to our teachers and to our students. Because if our budget is going to fail, where is it going to where is it going to hurt besides throwing Tom, Randy, and James into conniptions and we'll have to find them on some hospital floor somewhere. It's going to hurt our students and the quality of education they get because their classes are going to be larger because we can't have the numbers of teachers that we need. We're not going to have the programs that they're used to having. So you could probably kiss a lot of foreign languages goodbye. You could probably kiss a lot of athletics goodbye. Our poor volley guys volleyball desperately wants to be a team a varsity sport. We could say bye to that. I mean, it just it just seems so irresponsible for a district that's in the top six percent in the entire state. And people coming here in droves. Sue, I'm going to disagree with you on this because I think you need to look at our census and look at our population and the quality of kids that we're getting. We get kids in our district that are already on third base, the majority of the kids. I mean, we could sit there and say they hit a home run, but when they're starting on third base, are they really hitting a home run? We get quality kids because we attract quality kids and quality parents. And we can't discount that to our, our voters. They know that. And to, I think what is irresponsible is not recognizing the difficult economic times. And you're saying, well, I know you can't afford it now, but in three, four years, I think you're going to be able to afford it. These are people who can't even see past this year and how are they going to pay off whatever they have. And to them, to tell them that are four years we think you can pick this up and start paying more I don't think that's a reality that you're going to talk them into well I guess I probably don't understand what the term on third base means but you know sitting on the the TNL committee and looking at some of the specific student demographics I'm certainly seeing um, an increasing changing in the demographics of socioeconomic uh, additional language learners um, special needs you know a lot of additional challenges to, to educating the children in this district as well, which comes with a with, with a financial cost that we need to be mindful of. So I guess I will point out some of that thought there. You know, your point of the demographics is, is well taken and proud of the work that this district has been able to do with all of our children. Uh, and it's come with the resources that this community has provided. And I can tell you going on that, <coughs> I've lived in this district for 20, 21 years. Um, and I will forego a vacation, I will forego a new car, I will forego that extra, you know, not going to Starbucks and whatever, and I'm not saying everybody does that, but I will forego that to make sure our kids in this community get the same education that my kids got, same education that their, you know, others in the community received. It is our responsibility to, to continue that tradition, and when I hear, what I hear from people is, the incremental is what they like because they know where it's coming, they know it's going to decrease, and they also know that, you know, they can see what they can afford coming up, um, you know, based on what, you know, if you have to repair something in your house or any, that kind of thing, you know, they know what's coming. And I, again, don't, do not want to kick the can down road, and that's what I feel like we'll be doing in four years. It's like we bury our heads in the sand. So, you know, I can't going back and back and back and back to the to the voters is what tires people out. Tire people out. <laughs> so be a different board in four years too. So. Right. Any other uh, I, I've asked I've asked for everybody to share their positions. You have I thank you all for that. I appreciate that. That this is a good discussion. It's a little bit more than just an opening discussion here. Um, uh, in the interest of time and knowing we can have other opportunity, we will have for sure one other opportunity to discuss this. Uh, what I'm going to recommend here is to prepare ballot language or next step for two different structures because I've heard support from myself included about 
renewing the current levy at 9.75 for four years. So I think we want to see ballot language on that and also ballot language on a six year incremental uh, for $1.5 million. I don't know what else, what else in the details I may have missed there. Um, I've heard uh, a request to help with some additional or uh, provide some more of the financial modeling for the six year incremental so we can really understand how that where that where that comes into play what that means for six years what that what that I'm air quoting here for people listening you know the deficit spending is and I had two please for, let's do apples to apples so if we're looking at a six year in incremental and and how that would look in Randy's world let's compare a six year view on the four year and a six year view on the four year that's yeah. great that, that's great thank you um, the next check-in I want to do is, uh, you know, I am pleased that we didn't have eight different uh, eight different opinions amongst five different people. We probably got six different opinions from five different people, thanks to me. I was a little bit more gumby this year. Um, I'm not feeling, but I'm open to it, I'm not feeling the need for another meeting, meaning it feels like we can continue this discussion at the regular board meeting. That's an opinion of one. What do others feel? Should we talk about getting together again it, to the, continue this discussion? What's the timeline requirements of this? Well, we, we, I knew the res resolution of necessity before July 1st, mm -hmm. and then the resolution proceed in July. So if at the Rex regular board meeting, the board cannot come to a resolution, we could do a special meeting after that yeah. to do the focus. Uh, so, I mean, we can and give we, you guys time to. We can definitely get this ballot language request. together, and if you don't want to proceed, that's fine. You, we could we could reschedule. I got obviously I got a little bit of. Uh, I've got the modeling done. I just need to put it in a graph form that uh, I can show it, mm -hmm. rather than pages of uh, nine point font numbers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, please. Yeah, I, I'll just point out, I'm scheduled to be out of town after board meeting. So I'm, I am a little concerned if we're going to kick it towards July 1st that um, I'm not sure how to, yeah, I'm not sure how to do that at this point. Are you going to be gone both weeks after the board um, meeting? Midweek to midweek. Okay. All right. Well, that's, that still gives us some time. So that's, yeah. that's okay. You can get I'll off get the plane or wherever you're going and go right to a board meeting. No, I, yeah. And then I, I got a bridal shower, so I don't know about that. Oh, yeah. Okay. There you wow. go. So I'll uh, be back on the 16th. New, is it a remake of the okay. movie Bridesmaids? <laughs> I, I hope not. <laughs> I, I feel comfortable that we can uh, wrap this up in the regular board meeting. I think we've got a little bit of a safety valve. I'd probably also offer, though, somebody thinks about it today, wakes up tomorrow, and is like, no, we need to get together beforehand, reach out to me, and we can discuss it and see what we can do beforehand as well. Uh, yeah, I, I am concerned because we have pretty, two pretty stark different understandings right mm -hmm. now. Um, and I guess I'd like to hear a little bit more about, you know, if there are costs to cut. I'm not sure what programs, Laura, you referenced um, cutting some programs. And I guess, I, you know, I don't know what that looks like. How does that impact? I don't know what those programs are, what the costs are, how that would, you know, I, I guess I'd want to hear more about that. and how that would affect the modeling that we're working out. And, I mean, I don't know if you have specific programs in mind that you don't think are working right now. Um, there's some that I would look at, but in general, when things like this are done, you usually come up with a, a working list and put the items on there and how much they are. And yeah, I, I feel like we would need that list before our next board meeting. Because it's affecting all the modeling we're asking Randy to create. So that's yeah. I there's I feel like we're in we're we're too pretty you know the renewal versus the six year in incremental is a pretty big difference to me four year renewal six year incremental. So, so to, if I could ask a clarifying question, mm -hmm. um, with so we're I'm creating this the directives here so next step so the ballot renewal and then the budget implications, someone mentioned they wanted to see that. Um, and then also, what we know that by doing this, we're going to need additional funds in 2027 or a blend of program, program cuts 
to limit what that next, next task will eventually be. Um, either pushing that out further or lowering the amount of the ask. So what would help us with the programming cuts is to have a target of you know, what is the goal by making those you know, reductions to programming and staff um, that, that we would want to work into our model. So is there could be some help in trying to give us that directive because we can, we can cut you know, programming. When we talk about cutting programming, we're talking about cutting staff who run the program. So, so if we're talking about reducing those things, I just need to know how deep to go. Is it 7%, is it 4%, is it a million dollars a year off the budget? That would help us with that modeling. Because otherwise, it's, yeah, it's, it's sound like light, and sound light doesn't help Randy with the spreadsheets. Yeah, what is the cash position we right. want to be in in right. six years? Yeah. That's probably how I interpret yeah. that With the that ask. With option two, the six year incremental levy, you know, there is the budget, you know, show the budget implications to that. Um, so trying to get it so that if I'm showing a renewal and it's no new taxes, I like that. I like that as a superintendent. But there's what's on the other side of that door. That's what we, we've got to get to. So the voters are informed in, in that discussion and the board's informed. So um, and we know what the six year, you know, what that does. 1.5 million continuing what we're growing at is really isn't increasing, you know, what we've been collecting. Um, so we, there is some restraint that has to be demonstrated with so, maintaining that too for six years. So I appreciate that. What it was? So what? What if I said so? Model where a new operational levy in 2027 would not be necessary. It, you know, is that? Is that? I mean, well, you know, for example, and that's we need some direction. I, and I'm just playing. If you said, hey, we need four million dollars in reductions in fiscal year 27, that gains us one year, right? If, and it, it gets us out through 2029 comfortably. So that's the kind of things we need, you know, because we said, mm -hmm. oh, no, we need, I'm, I'm exaggerating here, $10 million in 2027. That gets us out to, um, that gets us out to 20, fiscal year 32. Right, so that order, that that number is really important. <laughs> so I'm thinking, is there yeah. a way that you could also give us a list of? Um, we always talk about funded and unfunded. We talk about requirements and additional that we provide. So we talk, you know, for example, transportation. Right, you don't have to provide transportation for high school students. How much does that cost us to do that? You know, we don't provide transportation for this. You know, and then let's say, okay, well, here you go. We don't have to do this, but we do it. But we have to do this, so we can't cut that. We have to pay for CCP, and that keeps increasing. You know, that's an unfunded mandate. How much does that cost us? That people need to see that. We can't cut CCP. You can't cut transportation for um, certain kids. You can't cut special education services. You can't cut ELL. You can't cut, by law, these things. So to see that list of this is what we have to have, these are the unfunded mandates that we have to do, that this costs us this much, I'd love to see that list. So if we, if we have a discussion, and so we can, we can, that gives us a little bit of a direction. So maybe we look at, you know, four years gets us to not going back to the voters in 2029. Right. Um, now, the, so, so that would, and then, and then, ten million gets us to 2032. So we can we can begin to play with those parameters. Now, um, given the the depth of what those discussions are, I'm wondering if the 20th is going to be a meet. You know, do we break this up, or we meet before the 20th to to dive into this a little bit, talk mm -hmm. about this? Yes. Yep. It also gives us an opportunity because we're going to have to communicate yep. with our staff because we're hiring teachers now and we're talking about potentially $4 million reductions and what does that mean? So we have to also, while we're working in this kind of split screen world of preparing these options, um, 
we also need to communicate with staff in a healthy way to say, we're doing an exercise in trying to give the board information that they need to make the best decision. This doesn't mean that this is what we're going to do, or this, if we list these programs and the staff that are attached to them will be reduced to get to that number, this doesn't mean that that is the plan. So we'll have to communicate right. with our unions and just to, yeah, so, so no one's caught. So yeah, I'm right. just thinking. Well, and I start to think through, I remember the performance audit and there's this concept that, you know, and I, well, again, I don't know what the number is for new money, uh, you know, this small operational increase ask under this scenario, but I don't know, are there enough programming cuts in your mind that would help avoid that anyway? I mean, these are big dollars. These are, these are, it's not one or two, you know, this, this is the okay, cut two administrators, cut out, pick a program or pick a language. Now are we coming up with another, you know, X million dollars. So uh, I don't know that we I'm can cut to, our yeah, way. Yeah, Hearing this conversation, yeah, to your point, yeah, where do we cut our way to success? How do we cut our way to success here? Oh, that's a good way to phrase that. Cut our way to success. Most organizations have trouble cutting their way to success, by yeah, the way. That's, but that's Tom, you were saying the 20th. <laughs> that's exactly no longer I'm just worried that if we get into a, a lengthy conversation yes. about programming reductions that trying to get to the decision yes. is there enough time for that in a regular board meeting? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In our board meeting is 17th. On the 17th. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. okay. It's I 17th. just wanted to yeah, yeah, sorry. No, it's okay. I didn't look at my calendar. Um, 20th was May, so I'm still a month was behind. May. That's our, it was a <laughs> so, day in May. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think yeah. next yeah. next week having a meeting if Randy and I Don and other administrators can pull together and start to craft that. Um, you know, we, we might want to spend just just a meeting to present that information so that at the 20th you have that already digested because you're going to be reacting to it on the 20th and then having to make a decision a half right. hour later. So I'm just worried about just giving you yeah. that space. Right. The, to do that, the night, so. the, when yeah. everybody says the 20th, just, yeah. just yeah. Like 20 I'm not going to break okay. that role. No, absolutely no, no. Just, think the, the just think the 17th. <laughs> 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 I did do that, I think. I think so. you have a green and blue outfit on. Well, so I, I mean, I think Laura, if you have a green and blue outfit, I'm going to say that we need to do that. Yeah. 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 For a work session, it was really good. So, Thomas put out there to, yes. to meet before the 17th. I, I feel like we need another meeting too, because that's going to be too much on the 17th. Before the 17th? To have another work, like a. a I'm not going to be here. I leave Friday. I just feel like it's going to be a lot to digest, and I really don't want another five and a half hour meeting on the 17th. Well, I think the, per the, the, the purpose of a proposed meeting would be an informational, educational, yes, no where cuts come, right. no decisions. There right. would be no ballot language proposed in that. Just to talk about it. When, when do you leave, Susan? Oh, not until after the meeting. Yeah, but but Sue's out next day. week. Um, I'm scheduled to be out the 20th through the 27th. So we can present Please, this. Please, if you're listening to this, do not break into my house. <laughs> so <laughs> we could. We, you're leaving, but your husband won't be. Yes, and my very large dog. I would That's say you're your dog will be in my home. Because if we, if so we could do we, the 19th, we, could, we could do the 17th, where we present this information, no decision, and then schedule a meeting like on the 19th or yeah. 18th. Yeah. To then make the decision. Okay. Yeah. So that that okay. could be. And that would get everybody around the table. So let's and let's let's bring this information to the seventeenth. And so oh, you're you're gone. I will be here. Yeah. Can we do this by? You can't do it. By can't do it by Zoom. Well, you can't well, vote. Can't vote. Yeah, and we wouldn't be voting. It's just information. It's just well, but if we do it by Zoom, you still have to have. It has to be open to the public via Zoom. Yeah. And. And, we, and there's been issues with. We'd have to check with Dave on that one. Yeah. yeah. It's got to be open right. to the public. Yeah. 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 And that whether or not we have a, we're in a meeting room and those who can't make it zoom in. But it's got to be open and, and having the public open to a zoom 
has not gone well. We're not, we're not, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. So the regular meeting on the 17th to hear to further this discussion is everybody available on the 18th and or 19th? I have to work the evening of the 18th. So yeah, I can. So the evening of the 19th. Okay. Work with me here, people. Well, I can't. I already have plans. We'll be out of town. We've made these plans for. What about the morning? What about the morning of the 18th? Right after the meeting, that won't really give us any time. Yeah. Yeah, I can. I can make more of the 18th. Or if we do, if we split it up and have. So Sue, when are you leaving? I leave Friday and. The 14th. Seventh. 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 Sorry. Yeah. The seventh, and I will be coming back either extremely late on the 16th or sometime on the 17th, depending on how exhausted I am and if I have to split the trip. And again, the 26th, 27th, 28th is not available. I can come back early. Oh, you no. I mean, I can come back a day early. Well, we could we could do the. This information, then to your point, Eric, looking at the having another meeting where we make the decision, set, you know, on that following week, it cuts that, it gets us a little closer to that deadline. But what about like June 26th, 27th? Susan's out of town. Yeah. I, I, I can, I, but when, I could make the evening of the 26th or maybe the 27th. I, I was scheduled to come back. I would be here by Thursday afternoon. So, so I would even open up uh, Friday the, the morning of the 28th. Or the evening of the 27th. Yeah, the evening of the 27th. Yeah, I, I can make that work too. Sorry, it's hard to schedule no. vacations when you have meetings all over the place. <laughs> I thought that was a safe time. Yeah, the, if we did the 27th, it would have to be the evening because that's the date of the OSBA seminar. And that goes from 9 to 3.30, so I can so be here by. We will hold five loosely 5, 6, uh, 5.30, 6 o'clock. We will hold loosely 6 o'clock on the 27th. Okay. Are you good with um, putting this, let us put that out to the, the media? Let's, we can do that after the, okay. I have still some hope that there's a discussion that. But still, so no, it's nothing just, to cancel it either. So if you want to put it out there, that's fine. Well, the, the, the key though is that you want to go ahead and get ballot language put together for the seventeenth. Still want ballot language for yeah. the seventeenth for both okay. options. Right. Listen, these cuts, and we'll see how, where the we'll have the conversation okay. with that date in hand. Does the two million versus the one point five million ballot language matter for the incremental? Is that a I was here. One, Somebody was said it might have been used as you know some compelling you know the one point five. I heard a reason in there that I didn't write it down. Well, but the, the kind of language, I, I mean, that's yeah. easier to interpret oh. for people. Well, but I like that the two million pushes us out further for meeting to re for renewal. Well, I think it was the one five dovetails us into that six year time period, which seemed like the palatable, um, yeah. you know, okay. eight versus six. So that takes yeah. into the six to address want to control over their tax money versus that concern. Plan. That's yeah. right. That was the compromise. Let's say the compromise dollar amount. So I, I'd say 1.5, but if we have I'm gonna, more I'm gonna, thoughts. If you guys are okay, I'm going to have, um, it's, it's not going to be any more costly to have uh, bond council run three. Two, all right. right. All right. Do, do three, four three, year okay. and then do these things. That way you have them and, and you, can, you can see them. So. Okay. Okay. so the information we've asked in terms of the financials and maybe starting to plan out, Is that information we could receive earlier on the board meeting, like mid next week? Uh, I'm easy, but not cheap, so. Maybe by, yeah. Well, yeah we, we have to look at it before the meeting. He's got the end of year he's wrapping up, too, so. Uh, yeah. Well, it's, it's not, Randy runs the analysis, but we have to collect the data from mm -hmm. all the di different departments. And so principals are, you know, all day yesterday interviewing staff, so we'll have to find time. So given the, the, the number, 
what we've done in the past is we've set a target that we've given each department in each area saying, give us a list of reductions, um, you know, to hit the percent that is, you know, correlating to your department. So they need time. So it's not just me and Randy sitting in the office throwing darts at, you know, which positions we feel. We want people, you know, we want to hear from James and Courtney and Jason and the preschool and the elementary principals all contribute a list if their target that we give them. So it's going to take time for them to process that. Um, and then we collect that and then we go through. And, I mean, Tapping is that in. your intent of the cuts? Yeah. Are you more specific about programs or did you see a percent cut across the district? I think doing percent is difficult. Um, yeah. I would just more look at what is working versus what is not working um, in terms of level of success because we have to start somewhere and I'm used to seeing like a list of possible things on that could be reduced. Not that they well, want, not that you that want to be Yeah, I mean, that's how we create that list is from and the there's a cost fix to them on what they equal, you know, for the year and what equals over time also. I guess if, if we're not looking for a percent, I, I'd hate to go to every department and say we need you to cut 3% if there's specific programs that you had in mind that that's what you really want well, to target I, for cutting. Yeah, I think I, I'd like direction on that. Yeah, I guess I'm not clear. Because what is working and what is not working isn't a good lens for us right. to use because I've got an inbox full of emails of a program that we've cut just this week that, that in our opinion, isn't working. But to those families that are impacted with that, it, it is working, and now we're creating a barrier for those families. And that's with transportation, with the mm -hmm. multiple stops that we do oh. when we cover that. Uh -huh. so, so for me to sit in my chair and say, that's not working, that's why other voices are important to that process. Um, I don't know if I would have found, I don't know if I would have identified that had transportation said this is a real issue. And you, you've been through operations, you've heard the explanations that we're, we're the only district that does this. You know, we're holding seats on buses for multiple, all the, but to those families that I'm getting emails and responding to, that program is working for them. So, so I just, I, I yeah. finding that, threading that needle is important. You know, and, and for, to going back to what is our goal here, what, what was my goal of making that recommendation of let's avoid a, a, a incremental oper, a operational levy ask in three years in 2027? You know, when, when I said earlier that I am still open to the four-year renewal, that also meant I understand and am in agreement with the implications of doing another levy in 2027. So I'm I'm not even on this big cutting band or this big this thought of cutting a bunch of programs. Because another one of my guiding principles here that I didn't let, that I didn't mention, but is keeping the uh, excellence of the school district in place too, and cutting the fabric of this district is is um, not something I'm interested in doing at all. It's not what I ran on, not what I was elected to do in my viewpoint. So I'm kind of holding on to that as well. So I'm probably going to turn this back around and say, you know, yeah, if there's specific programs that we think would be useful, that would be a game changer in this levy decision. We'd ask to put those forth. You know, let's let's have that discussion. But I'm not looking for a big exercise for cuts here. I just reversed myself. I know, but I'm more interested, I guess, specifically hearing what are these programs that you're hearing about from your viewpoint that aren't working, and is the savings related to those such that it changes a levy decision for me. So, um, we'll go into our regular meeting with a continuation of this discussion. I think this was a really good discussion, if I may. Um, hard decisions to be made here and rough to do in a morning session. So, Tom, Randy, once again, thank you for the presentation. Really well done leading us through this to help facilitate this. So. I think I just heard a motion to adjourn. Anyone opposed? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Thank you.